today we are going to discuss pathology for dnb examination so the idea behind this is uh, as you are planning to take in november december dnb this series it's to equip you in the shortest period with the maximum number of previous mcqs the whole idea behind solving previous mcqs is majority of them majority of them at least in dnb are repeated from previous question bank they have their own database they have their own set of uh, mcq banks high yield topics from which they keep on churning and revising the same mcqs the same topics again and again that will account for almost 70 to 80% i can say the rest 20% is like uh, the thing is chance so we can for preparing for that 20% rest 20% we have to read everything so what we do is we make sure that we equip you with this main bulk 80% so that you don't miss anything which is high yield anything which is to be known by everybody those things you don't miss rest 20% is like uh, if you have gone through that somewhere in the course of discussion we would have uh, given you some clues hints towards that based on that you can make it up okay so i'll not strictly restrict myself to only the previous mcqs as and when we take the mcqs i'll be moving around a little bit and try try to make a list of all the high yield points in that particular topic related topics what has been asked not only in dnb all the related because more or less the question banks are same whether it's appg whether it's karnataka entrance whether it's aipg all the state national entrances more or less the same okay right so to begin with pathology uh, as it was told to you in the flyers as it was uh, given to you beforehand that 65% of the mcqs will be from the main 28 topics from which they are going to pick up okay if you if you want you can come on this side to be more comfortable you are able to see the screen right okay so first i'll get started with those 28 high yield topics from which maximum questions are going to come uh, rest uh, in the uh, afternoon session we will have a look at those minor topics from which one or two one or two here and there questions have been asked uh, let us not try to get the whole view of those uh, minor topics there are many the number or many for minor topics okay will not get a total view of that for these topics let us try to get a total view okay so inheritance is one very favorite topic for pathology for medicine for pediatrics in all these three they are going to ask about inheritance we exactly exactly cannot segregate whether this question belongs to pathology belongs to medicine or not but the topic has to be very clear okay first a few mcqs we'll try to have a look at few mcqs and then get started with the discussion proper what i'll be doing is i want you people to actively participate okay that is what help us remember better we'll try to uh, churn out some mnemonics mnemonics already uh, sir is really good at making mnemonics he loves making mnemonics okay so let us try the to remember the best of the mnemonics okay uh, try to find a logical way how to remember these mnemonics maximum entities in that okay here and there some apart from mnemonics some amount of logical remembrance that also will try to apply for that i need your active participation that is must and should that will help you better in grasping the subject okay fine any, anything is fine you, you need not panic you get it wrong fine no issues right we are here to sort out the whole thing duchenne's muscular dystrophy autosomal recessive autosomal dominant x linked recessive x linked dominant the scenario in in brief i'll be telling you about the approach as well state entrances dnb the scenario is very simple they try to keep the question straight forward if this were to appear in other examinations like uh, aims aipg jipmer pgi chandigarh usmle they would have given you a case scenario a young child somewhere, somewhere in the first decade of life 5 years 6 years presenting with the distal muscle weakness okay uh, with the decreased muscle tone less than 2 grade 2 or grade 1 muscle tone in the extremities especially the distal muscle weakness with inability to walk especially when it starts crawling and walking it has an inability it's not able to stand up from the sitting position it takes the the child takes the help of his upper limbs to stand that would be the classical history that would be given to you okay based on the history based on the age you are supposed to make a working clinical diagnosis that this could be duchenne muscular dystrophy okay they wouldn't give you the straight forward diagnosis dnb straight forward the diagnosis is given to you directly they are asking you what is the mode of inheritance autosomal recessive autosomal dominant x linked recessive x linked dominant these kind of questions are called as pure knowledge based questions you you know you know 
you don't know otherwise you cannot just uh, uh, apply any logic and arrive at the diagnosis so any guesses on this what could be the mode of inheritance x linked recessive so this takes us to the list where we have to uh, will have will solve some more and then have a look at the list where we have to memorize the all the x linked recessive disorders okay the list is here this is the list uh, rather than making a mnemonic for this first let us have a look at all how, how can we remember them among the uh, dist muscular dystrophies it's the first one that comes to our mind is Duchenne's. Duchenne's is always X-linked. Among the uh, hematological disorders, hemophilia A and B, both of them with G6PD deficiency. These two are always to be remembered as X-linked recessive disorders. Majority of the X-linked disorders are recessive, except for dominant. Once we go to dominant, I'll tell you there are, there are hardly any three or four dominant X-linked uh, disorders. Majority are recessive. Okay. Hunters among the mucopolysaccharidosis, Menkes disease which is characterized by kinky hair, it's called the hair shafts show kinking or bending, it's called as kinky hair disease or Menkes disease, X-linked recessive, uh, Fabris, Viscott, Aldrich, Lishnihan, that's the list, it continues as Bruton's A gamma globulinemia, it's popularly called as X-linked Bruton's, if you remember the full name, you don't have to memorize, X-linked Bruton's a gamma globulinemia, color blindness, color blindness has two peculiar patterns, one is X-linked, sometimes it is also classified under codominance, color blindness is also classified under codominance, if that is the question, directly go for color blindness, otherwise if the, the codominance is not there in the options, only X-linked recessive is there, straight away go for X-linked recessive, complete androgen insensitivity syndrome, Andro testicular feminization or androgen insensitivity syndrome x linked recessive congenital aqueductal stenosis causing hydro congenital hydrocephalus it's x linked recessive inherited nephrogenic diabetes insipidus x linked the list how you want to remember choices left to you but as and when we keep revising them again and again again and again you will come across these disorders somehow it will be imprinted x linked recessive disorders which of the following shows monogenic inheritance? Monogenic inheritance, what do you understand by that term? Then we will go to the options. What do you mean by monogenic? It's self-explanatory. Monogenic, single gene disorders. Okay. Inherited disorders, we group them as single gene and multifactorial. Single gene disorders are those what Mendel described. Mendelian inheritance. They have Mendelian pattern of inheritance. So, it runs either as dominant or recessive involves autosomes or allosomes that is sex linked or autosomal so you get four combinations autosomal dominant autosomal recessive sex linked dominant sex linked recessive there are some minor types like y linked inheritance mitochondrial inheritance miscellaneous types all these running in a predictable fashion are called as single gene disorders okay also known as monogenic some disorders which of late you might be hearing that there is genetic predisposition of late, initially when we began uh, our journey with medicine, we thought hypertension, diabetes, uh, coronary artery disease, ischemic heart disease, hypercholesterolemia, all these have no genetic basis. We thought they are because of dietary factors, they are because of environmental factors, smoking, alcohol, all this. All these were implicated. These days in your medicine, definitely you people are learning that there is genetic basis to this. But they are not pure monogenic form. That is, there is no single one gene which runs in a very predictable way in the family, in the pedigree, like an autosomal dominant, autosomal recessive, they don't run like that. There's, there are multiple genes, multiple loci, variable expressivity, variable penetrance, they may get expressed in a particular generation, may not get expressed, they have interaction with other genes, multiple loci are there, clubbed with environmental factors. All these together finally determines the outcome in these patients. So, those are called as multifactorial disorders. Monogenic multifactorial monogenic which of these following shows monogenic inheritance now look at them and very clean nice way you can exclude which is the one which shows monogenic atherosclerosis hypertension hereditary spirocytosis and coronary disorder spirocytosis we have read that directly there is clean cut monogenic single gene inheritance what is the pattern autosomal dominant it's a dominant inheritance 
Now, how are we going to remember which is dominant, which is recessive, which is X-linked? I'll come to that later. At this point, just remember it's monogenic inheritance. It's not multifactorial. One single gene getting hit. One. Am I moving a little too much? No, no, not a problem. This is the classification of what I already said. The modes of inheritance. Monogenic, also called single gene, also called Mendelian. It can be asked in any way. So remember all the synonyms, all three. Do autosomal recessive, autosomal dominant, X-linked recessive, X-linked dominant. The second pattern is polygenic or multifactorial, synonymous for each of them. Polygenic stands for multiple genes or multifactorial. It's not just genes, apart from genes, it's the environmentally influenced as well. Then finally, the mitochondrial inheritance, which is totally peculiar. It neither fits into monogenic nor fits into the polygenic. Mitochondrial inheritance, where the DNA material is altogether different. It's not the nuclear DNA. It is the mitochondrial DNA, which, which is acquired from the maternal side. It's always the maternal contribution. Which are the examples? We'll see. We'll come to that. Any example you can quote as of now for mitochondrial inheritance? Any disease? Classical is Leber's. To be remembered for exam purposes, only Leber's optic neuropathy. Whenever there is Leber's optic neuropathy, think of mitochondria. Okay. Next question, moving on. Thalassemia. All these are from DNB. They have given you the years also where, as you can see, they are repeated a couple of times. Every question comes twice or thrice. Okay. So, it is quite often repeated. Uh, you people are all taking this DNB only. This and uh, finished your internship, all of you. Long back. Okay. Right. No, I'll have to, the thing is, I'll have to uh, tailor it according to your requirements. So, if you're directly focused on that, so let us be focused only on MCQ rather than going details. Okay, autosomal recessive dominant, X-linked recessive, X-linked dominant. So, thalassemia shows what kind of inheritance? Thalassemia shows autosomal recessive pattern. Okay, answer is correct. Okay, now coming to the patterns. Let us have an analysis of the pedigree. Uh, they may rarely give a pedigree in DNB. This we generally expect in other uh, uh, entrances like generally USMLA, okay, pedigree charts or sometimes even in uh, AIMS and uh, PGI Jipner, there also you can expect. DNB is more like state entrances, so pedigrees are unexpected but better to be uh, confronted with pedigrees. So that otherwise if you are not prepared, you really are in a soup. You spend at least 10 minutes in one question only solving a pedigree. So don't take much time. So, what the autosomal dominant pedigree is going to show you is two things. One, in any population, both male and female are getting uh, affected by the disease. Affected is completely shaded. Okay, Carriers are partially shaded or a dot is kept in the center. Carriers are depicted in two ways, either half shaded or a dot is kept. Completely affected people are both males and females. So, it is definitely not a sex link disorder. Okay. It's an autosomal disorder. Both males and females in any given population, entire population. It's not in one just pedigree. They say you that in one given population, in a community, in a part of the country, in a state, both males and females are more or less equally affected. Okay. Then there are no skip generation. That is the second feature that will tell you that this is more taking you more towards autosomal dominant. Autosomal dominant. Both males, females affected. You are not finding any carriers there in the pedigree. Thirdly, there are no skip generation. Three hallmark features to take you towards autosomal dominant. We have already, uh, no, we have not yet listed autosomal dominant. We have listed X-linked recessive, right? Autosomal dominant. With each pregnancy, what happens? There is a 1 in 50, that is 1 in 2 or 50 percent chances that the offspring will inherit the diseased allele. Dominant disorders, as you know, out of the two, only one allele has to be affected. Then the disease will get manifested, even if the other allele is normal. So, for dominant disorders, whenever we write pedigree, we are going to use capital A, small a for the pedigree. Okay. So, capital A is affected, small a is unaffected. So, both, it depends on whether both parents are having the disease or only one of the parents is having the disease. Whether it's male or female, it doesn't make difference, right? Because we are not going to write XY here. It's not a sex link disorder. AA, capital A, small a, and small a, small a. It means only one parent is affected, the other parent is not affected. So, in each pregnancy, if there is not a new fresh mutation, then there is 50% chance of all the total pregnancy. So, if, you, if a couple has four children, half of them, 50%, two will be suffering from the disease, affected by the disease, unless there is a new mutation. 
or affected individuals will have at least one parent who carries the disease alone. That is, there are no skip generation. Somebody is affected from the disease, parent should be affected. Either of the parents should be affected. Autosomal dominant inheritance is often called vertical inheritance because transmission is from directly from parents to offspring, not from grandparents to the grandchildren. It's from parents to offspring, so it's called vertical transmission. Across the population, as I said before, both male and females are affected. and male to male transmission is also known in autosomal dominant male father can transmit the disease to his son but generally in x linked recessive disorders it's the grandfather maternal grandfather who transmits father doesn't transmit the disease okay what about this look at the shaded areas shaded half shaded ones are carriers carriers Uh, it's a recessive disorder problem with recessive is both alleles should be affected only then the disease gets manifested when there is only one allele affected the uh, is is involved then the disease doesn't get manifested those people are called as carriers they are going to transmit the disease right uh, carriers are there affected people are there okay autosomal recessive inheritance this also across the population both males and females are to be equally affected because it has got nothing to do with the Uh, x linked inheritance pattern okay the parents of an affected individual are not affected so this means what generations are there skip generations are there in autosomal recessive always there will be generations which are skipped so uh, previous generation third generation fourth generation is affected skip generation is there with each pregnancy of carrier parents there is one in four 25% chances just remember this value vaguely i tell you how did we arrive at this we will uh, do a little bit of mathematics and arrive at that how did we reach there one in four that is 25% chances that the offspring will inherit two copies of the disease only when it inherits inherits both the copies it will manifest the disease very quickly we'll see how it how that happens this is okay we are going to use a only okay by uh, convention this is how it is used capital a small a is one parent capital a small a is another parent the disorder under consideration is a recessive disorder autosomal recessive disorder okay so how what are the two alleles we are going to get capital a small a capital a small a are these individuals suffering from the disease both the parents are they suffering they are not suffering because it's they are heterozygous they are heterozygous only one allele is affected they are not homozygous now let us make these combinations and see what all can happen capital a capital a capital a small a okay this with this this with that okay small a small a and one more small a small a right am i right in this we have got the correct uh, combination okay now look at that how many are affected small a is unaffected capital a is affected affected individual how many are affected out of four children if they are going to have 25% will be affected when another rest 25% will be carriers and what about the rest 50% they will be absolutely normal now these normal individuals will not transmit the disease if they marry another normal individual the disease is not transmitted in that chain the disease gets transmitted only in these two now the problem is the now the real problem begins with the capital a capital a individual capital a capital a individual is affected with an autosomal recessive disorder these disorders present quite early in their life okay recessive disorders start presenting in the first decade of life majority of them are enzymopathies enzyme deficiency so generally the general health of the patient may not be good enough to take the patient to the second or third decade of life where he can marry he or she can marry and produce children so generally what happens these do not progress okay these do not progress further they die generally in the second or third decade or they may not produce children at all the problem is only with these these are going to act like these now next generation if they marry one more carrier so problem is in autosomal recessive disorders whenever there is consanguinity how these two people landed up these two people landed up because there was consanguinity double arrow i mean when they are joined together by a double arrow double line it means consanguinity is there because that allele is running in that closed family 
we have families right some royal families where one allele runs british royal families particular disease runs breeding disorder hemophilia runs in their family used to run in their family because of close consanguinity that is the problem with recessive disorder okay so when both parents are carriers uh, there is one in four or 25 percent chances of the offspring being affected by the disease there is one in four percent chances they'll inherit no copies of the disease allele and will not express the phenotype or be a carrier. This individual would not be able to risk, they, they won't pass the disease to the subsequent generation. The proportion of affected males should be equal in any gen, given general population, it should be equal to the females, both are equally affected. They are observed more frequently in consanguineous marriages wherever it is running, uh, that is in blood related. Those are the points about autosomal recessive now look at this inheritance pattern this pedigree what is this showing you what stands out in this the proportion of males and females affected is not equal there is slight tilting towards feminine side more of females are being affected are there any carriers no carriers are there any skip generation no skip generations okay so there is some sex predilection for this disorder Sex predilection for this disorder is very peculiar that any affected father transmits the disease to all his daughters. Any affected father, going back, there was an affected male, yes, there was an affected male, he has given the disease to all his daughters, he has not given the disease to any of his sons. Why? Just a simple clue to predict any X-linked dominant disorder. Father gives what chromosome to the sons? Why? The disorder is X-linked, so sons cannot get it. And father definitely gives one X to the daughters, all his daughters and it's a dominant disorder. Even if one is affected, the disease will manifest. So, always look out in the pedigree for an affected male and his daughters and sons. All daughters affected, no sons affected uh, and the affected father is giving to all his daughters. It means it's an X-linked, X-linked dominant disorder. Okay, that's the best clue always to predict X-linked dominant disorder. Both males and females can be affected, although males may be more severely affected, but lesser in number. The number is less, but the severity is more in males because they have only one copy of the X chromosome. In females, though there are two, one of them undergoes inactivation because of random inactivation. Lyons hypothesis, they undergo inactivation. Okay. Uh, some X-linked dominant disorders are general, they are generally lethal. There are very few to be remembered. Uh, it's Oh, there is a mnemonic for that also, very nice mnemonic, VIP, VIP, very important persons, all those who have X-linked dominant disorders, VIP stands for vitamin D resistant rickets, okay, incontinentia pigmenti and phosphaturia, incontinentia pigmenti is a, a, a cutaneous disorder wherein there is hyperpigmented macules all over the skin which have a chance of progressing to malignancy, higher risk of progression to malignancy with the phosphaturia, phosphaturia or phosphate disorders in general, vitamin D resistant rickets. These three are the most common X-linked dominant disorders which can be asked for, VIP, the mnemonic for that. When a female is affected, each pregnancy will have 1 in 2, 50 percent chance for the offspring to inherit the deceased allele. And when a male is affected, all his daughters, this is the hallmark clinching point. Please remember any pedigree, look at the male, father giving it to all his daughters. Just remember this statement, father transmits the disease to all his daughters, he doesn't spare his daughters, he is really angry on his daughters and he is very, very partial to his sons, he doesn't give the disease to the son. So that is X-linked, so it's a dominant father, X-linked dominant disorder. Okay. Now look at this pedigree, this we started off with, with whenever, when we spoke of uh, Duchenne's muscular dystrophy and uh, hemophilia, G6PD deficiency. Any more quickly, can you recollect from that list? Very quickly, all the X-linked recessive ones, Febreze, excellent, then, hmm? Hunters. Hunters, good, then, G6PD, yes, Bruton's A-gamma globulinemia, call it as always, call it as X-linked Bruton's A-gamma globulinemia, then, Color blindness, excellent. Then, hemophilia A and B, okay. Then, leash knee han syndrome, okay. Menke's hair disease, these were some of the Viscott Aldrich, runs as X linked recessive pattern. There are carriers, females are carriers. From where do they get it? They get it from their fathers. It is always maternal side. 
if you x linked recessive disorder trace the history father side there is no problem so how do you remember this you are going to again recollect the british royal family it's the queen who who uh, run uh, to the throne okay the men are always from some other families okay be it all those princes are from other families okay it they get from their fathers they get the disease they then transmit it to their son they transmit it to the sons and females act as carriers in between look at this this lady is a carrier who is given the disease to her son from where she would have got she would have got from her parents this this person definitely would not be this male would not be transmitting the disease okay what are the features they are hemizygous for that disorder that is heterozygous or hemizygous or only one allele is involved and uh, recessive disorder so uh, only when both are involved they are going to manifest the disease single involvement it is not going to manifest they are going to act as carriers all those females any idea when can these carrier females manifest the disease best example is turner second any other condition where there is only x uh, single x chromosome lyon hypothesis in a very unfavorable way we call it as unfavorable lyon inactivation that is selectively the only the one which is normal is getting inactivated majority of them 70 80% of the cells the normal gets inactivated the abnormal that is by chance chance occurrence so it is a selective lyon inactivation chance occurrence more common than that is turner syndrome where there is only one x chromosome and that is carrying the disease apart from these two scenarios females generally do not manifest disease in an x linked recessive condition it they are carriers since males are hemizygous for this uh, any male with one copy of an x linked recessive disorder is affected females are usually carriers affected males are related through their female parent from the maternal side for a carrier female with each pregnancy there is one in two again 50% chances for her sons will inherit the disease allele and one in two chance for her daughters will be carriers 50% chance again for the daughters to become carriers affected males are going to transmit the diseased allele to all of their daughters who are then carriers but this the again the problem here is affected males they are affected with an x linked disorder recessive disorder 